Hand. Laser. Advance. Okay. Don't hit that little button. Oh. <laughs> Laser, huh? Okay. Well, I'd like to uh, thank everybody for letting me the opportunity to come. A uh, little introductory pace. Uh, I live in uh, Summit County, which uh, is a lot colder than uh, Salina, Richfield, Sevier, all them fine places. It was too below this morning when I left the ranch. Uh, so there's, oh, my lower ranch, there's probably four inches of snow on the ground. Our upper ranch is probably 20 inches of snow. So that's the elevation of 5,600 feet, which I looked here, you know, it's 50, 54, 52, 80, somewhere around in here. So our upper ranch is about 7,000 feet. And uh, we've planted cover crops in the past at, at, at that elevation. Yes, there is crop failure, as we all know. So um, my thing is there is, uh, with this area where we live there in Colville, um, we ranch there uh, 365 days a year. We're our total out operation. So we don't, we raise some, day, but we graze cattle 365 days somewhere in either Millard County, Duab County, Twilla County, Davis County, and then in Summit County also. So we try primarily to try to cut costs and, and cut avenues to go. Um, I come from a farming background. Uh, my dad and his brothers, and my granddad are in the dairy business and also in the sheep business. So pretty complex deal. Uh, come from uh, a no-till drill that was probably at our place 30 years ago, but it wasn't because of cover crops. We have rocks and a lot of rocks. So basically just up the road on one of our, one of our places, we've had a gravel pit for 30 years just next to about five of our fields there. there's four or 500 acres there. So you see what kind of stuff we're dealing with to make things kind of come around as a whole. So I guess uh, what, what I kind of have here and what uh, Tony's told me to kind of visit with you about today is just my story um, of my soil health journey on, it's just a small field here, 26 acres in Summit County, but it, it had a lot of contrast to it. So. <clears throat> this picture on the left was, uh, like I say, July 23rd in 2012. So this field was, as you can see, there wasn't much carrying on there for it. In this particular, hopefully I don't, in this particular area here, so this is a pretty steep slope, as you can tell. And as we get going along the picture, you can see where this water is run down on this side. As you can see, you can only see where you, where you watered this piece here. As you see across the valley where these cedar trees are, these juniper here, there's, you know, there's not a lot of growth. There's cheat grass, rocks, not very much carrying on here. But what my demonstration here is right here for this point is the topography of this ground. So historically, this was a guy named Parley Brown. <clears throat> he was a dairyman <clears throat> down here in this area. And so when he would go to, he'd only have his water for X amount of hours um, or X amount of days. And so he would run up here and as all, we all know, dairy farmers, uh, everybody has their, has their corks of when they can rest and when they can't rest, and that's not very often, right? So he would come up here and he would change his water. He would lay down on his hands on this steep slope, wait till the water hit his hands. He'd jump up, he'd go change the water again. This man lived till he was 88 years old, and I took over this place when he was, uh, uh, he was 78 years old, so he actually helped me of a of, of small portion with this piece. He says, that's, that's the worst water right in the valley, and it's the, <laughs> it's the worst piece of ground in this valley. And I noticed it after the first few years, so as we kind of carry along here, here's what we had to deal with. So we talked about, somebody said 300 pounds PSI of compaction and everything else here. Well. That's pretty much ledge right there in some regards with just barely a little bit of topsoil on it right there. That was dug with a, <clears throat> with a traco. We had to pull the bucket off traco, use a ripper, and uh, use a rip tooth to, to get that pipe in. As you can tell, I mean, to beat, to uh, equalize uh, NRCS's requirements of 24 inches depth there, I mean, 
it was pretty tough going there. As you can see, you can see where the water ran down there historically because there was, there was another transition. A guy for a few years kind of got lazy and left that water not running, left the water running in the same spot. So as an NRCS project, everybody's seen one of these trucks pull up to their place, NRCS pick up here, this engineer comes. So we put, we put this pivot on this 26 acres here. Uh, in, like say that was in, I believe that's in five, 13 probably now, or 14. So here uh, is just a, the first year of, so I was really, really late. We talked about getting the cover crop in super, super late. Um, I can't remember exactly what day this was. Particularly, I would dare say mid-July, you can see over across the valley here that this is starting to burn up, you know, that June grass is burn up. So I would dare say that this was around end of July, first part of August. And you can see there's some foliage here, but you can see the weakness in front of me and the weakness in front of my truck. You can see some bulbless bluegrass coming in over here that was pretty, that was pretty heavily um, taken over this piece of property prior to going here. So we had sprayed this piece. We'd sprayed this piece with Roundup, then no-tilled it. But then we was back to the same issue <clears throat> that she was talking about earlier. Um, this particular system where this water comes from um, in that valley is out of Rockport Reservoir. It's about 1,800 acres that's on that reservoir line. So it comes down through the valley. Well, remember I said earlier it's good to be, it wasn't very good to be on the end of the line with a ditch. Well, now it was good to be on the end of the line with that pivot but the only problem with it was is when they installed the line it kept blowing apart on them because they had overshot their pressures in a whole bunch of other spots from the reservoir. So what does that do to my cover crop? Can't get no water on the cover crop. So what do you got? A little crop failure coming along with you. So uh, as, as we move along here this is <clears throat> like say July 23rd uh, 15 um, we got a little weeds and the filtration was about one inch per hour. So if you was back there watching kind of his demonstration, the one inch per hour is very, 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 just basically this is about like running off that table right there. I mean, there's not very much filtration that's carrying on there. So with that, the, in, in this particular year, in here we left half the field, uh, we left half the field was, was for the grazing of some yearlings and then we didn't have enough stock water and infrastructure because of the same problem I was talking about earlier is, is when the water would, when the line would blow out, well, then I wouldn't have no water from a stock. So then I would have my riser or I'd have trouble somewhere out of the way. And there's no, there's only one hydrant was off a, of, and as you guys know, the culinary system on a metered system, 115 head of yearlings will drink a pretty good jag of water every day. So what we decided here is, is to, try something a little bit demonstrate here as we said okay let's graze let's finish grazing half of it over differences was um, just kind of kind of a shot you know and so and we didn't have a very good electric fence system we had a perimeter fence that was awesome but the problem was is we had nothing that was here uh, this is a soil moisture sensor here that we had in here that we put in in our CS project also and it, it, that helped evaluate a lot of things as we've progressed forward. At first, you know, with that ground being that hard, we was like, well, we would look at it and say, well, there hasn't been no movement. Well, there hasn't been no movement because there was no penetration for the water to go down. So as we move along, kind of keep an eye on this tree right here. This is kind of my center point. Right here was just to the side where there was a soil moisture sensor also too. And so in September 17th, uh, of 16 we planted some cover crops we planted a in cover crop like say we already I already talked about this a little bit new irrigation system had you know trouble in the water um, but this field we had sprayed it prior right after that if we grazed it and then we'd cut the hay and we put it and then as we moved along here oh boy clicked the wrong one <laughs> she said don't click that one <laughs> I should have been. So anyways, here's our, uh, here's our cool season. So you got a little trit and you got some wheat. 
couple different kinds of wheat, some peas, some kale, and some forage collards. Okay, you can see like, so that was on the 17th, and this is on the 26th. So you can see them starting to emerge. Um, they talked about, you know, uh, some of the peas and different things, you know, that didn't plant quite as good, but you can see along things are starting to kind of come together um, with that. Um, we use, like say, we use a tie drill uh, just because it's, it's kind of the drill that we, we'd had. We'd, we'd run a pipeline company for a while planting seed on a bunch of pipelines, and so we, we pulled this machine off because it was starting to get used on the, on the front of it and stuff, so we changed it all up and started um, no-tilling with it and we have uh, we have four boxes let's see one two three we have four different boxes on there um, the only problem is we can't plant all four at the same time because the seeds are so heavy and the and like if you get into the corn and the other the gears start to turn and you're starting to press grass well it pops it starts to pop the other side it's just too much for it to take it so if you if you gear it back enough and, and we've done a better job of it we just can't plant as heavy what we would like to in that particular particular crop um like say that's so that is in that is in march 313 and so that field is still i mean you still see it that was that in 17 and normally in march it wouldn't look like that like there won't that's there'll be snow there in march this year but that particular year we had kind of a start of a dry dry year but there's back to that tree again uh, there's right there there's just been there's been a few sheep that had been on there my boy sheep had been hanging around there and a bunch of deer had been coming along but as as you know I mean they talked about it in the in the fall of the year that was starting to really really start to take so so once it started to take it was laying but it had the coverage on it but in theory you got to remember this field here had never ever had any cover crop ever in it it never had a drill a disc anything in it in it basically it's lifetime the old boy that told me he says oh we, we haven't turned out over since the 80s you know so it's a pretty substantial amount of time that had had been on that so so by springtime which was uh june 1st uh, like i said as i told you told you earlier we we graze out 365 days a year. This is this is cattle that had had a grazed prior over over here on it'd be the back side of this side where the cheat grass was that we would normally the June grass we grazed on it. They uh, these cattle here, so we'd put the bulls in about the 15th of May. So this is the first <clears throat> first part of June there. So yeah, it is only 26, you know, 26 acres, but the numbers and the capacity is what was unbelievable for me. I mean, I went from here basically to nothing to, you know, grazing these cattle here for 12 days. Well, 12 days um, in June, I sure wasn't going to go out and kick them a bell of hay for darn sure, you know, because what, what, what happens in those, you know, functionality is, okay, re reproductive, there's a bazillion different things that can happen in your operation that isn't viable to what I felt that was comfortable for our operation. And so by doing that, um, we have, we got a little bit, will you, can you click that to play it? I probably can, it's easier for you. But anyways, this is just, this is just an early morning when we just moved the fence. And we was only at a few feet Sometimes twice a day, depends on what we had going on, sometimes twice a day, tw once a day or twice a day. Nope, nope, I just let him go because in, I'll show you in a minute, I'll answer that for you in just a second. So that's a good question there is, is what, did we fence behind it? No, nope, we did not fence this one behind because see, we was already eating a cool season. So we was gonna go to a warm season. So, <clears throat> so we hurried up and grazed out across there really fast. And then, oh, there it did play. Okay, so then, as I talked earlier, there's a, you know, it's good feed and a good breed up. I mean, it's close confined area. Like say them cattle had already. And so we just moved them cattle across and then they trail right up to their summer range where they go. 
They go about five miles to the east of this, of this piece of property here. We don't have to truck them. We just trail them straight up there. But before, we was having to we just happened to put them on another ranch another time, put them on another truck, bring them back to this place, back over again. So, you know, not that we'd bum any calves or do anything, but it's just the time and the effort to do that on 115 head of cattle. You know, so, so time, has a, time has its essence here and it, it's helped us succeed on those parts. So back to your question again is so now we're, we grazed it for 12 days. We're up to the 14th of, of June and um, that's already planted. I've already planted that. I planted the, this piece on that day and the next day uh, the, I couldn't get the guy to spray it before so I just went ahead and planted it. My neighbor over here running this wheel line right here says I was the craziest guy in the world. You can't spray He says you'll kill all this seed. I'm like well the seed's in the ground. <laughs> it's not going to come up. It isn't that big a deal. And so, anyways, he, he's always argued with me over the fence for years, for the last few years of why, you know, I can't believe you, you planted it one day and you sprayed it the next. There's no way it's going to come out of the ground. So anyways, just different, you know, old dog, new tricks style of deal. So anyways, with that in our warm season, um, which we'd planted was like, say, a pretty multi-species. I mean, you can see there, we had quite a bit of difference. Um, in in variety there and and as we move along here you'll see that we did i mean a lot of these a lot of these took place they really did i mean we you can't name them all right here but there's quite a few of them that did well there's uh day 29 just coming up um you can see where i come across the pie shape here where i missed <laughs> right in here but you can see the difference you can see it's a little better little better country over here probably that soil that topsoil probably washed down off this side and was probably pulling into this side. Over here, the pivot, the gun wasn't quite moving. You know, the gun was probably off until it, so I didn't get the neighbor wet. You know, you can just see a, a difference of across the fence part there. Um, so that's day 47. So you can see the multi-species starting to, to really explode there. I mean, you can see it way different different aspects of of all of it right here i mean corn my dad my dad and my granddad said they'd never grow corn in colville utah well there it is right there and so yeah it is grazing corn and it's not 300 300 a bushel or anything like that but it's it's still it's the variety it's the variety that made this go around and so what we did here is uh as as you follow along this part is back to that tree again and you can see a couple spots where it didn't take or where I turned and it didn't plant quite as good because that ground was pretty solid and compact in some spots too. Um, so there you are at day 61 so remember I said earlier there's you know our, our growing season is pretty short well we're pushing the envelope right here because day 61 she's starting to turn the other way and so that's my little boy. Uh, he's 14 now, and he just turned 14 the other day. And so he uh, he's standing next to that grazing corn. You can see right there them sunflowers. Amazing those sunflowers. How 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 great they come in there, and how different varieties it was. They're just starting to kind of open up, and um, just a variety. You can see some oats, some grains right there next to him. You see lots of lots of different varieties there. There is. There is quite, I was really, really, really shocked on, on how many insects. I mean, I, I always been an insect hater, I guess, because you're always swatting a bee or you're always doing the things. And so you're looking at this from an aspect of, as soon as you walk in there, you can just hear everything just moving. Bzzz. I mean, you hear everything just buzzing along. And so even in the mornings when you'd move that electric fence, it was phenomenal of how much, how much insects assets there was where in there. So here's a day, here's a, just a day or so later, um, we started grazing. These are some old cows. Um, we don't sell our, <coughs> we don't sell our, uh, our old, our old gummer cows in the fall of the year. We, we keep them another year and graze them because of this reason right here. We can get another usage out of them because we go on and bail them permits too hard on their teeth. And so these are just some, these are, there's about uh, 33 head of these cattle here. 
And so we just started grazing them in here along along these lines and, and started moving that fence towards, kind of towards the tree, towards the tr skyline there. And then, like I say, here's that sunflower again, right here. Um, the only thing is, is the world famous right here, musk thistle that everybody has roaming around. Maybe you guys don't have it down here, but we have a ton of musk thistle in our country. And so, basically, them cattle would graze. I wish that picture was just a little bit better, but you can see behind them backs of them cattle, you can see what's the only thing that is kind of standing. And you can see, I'll show you a little more in this next slide or two, there's, there's some more litter on the ground behind those cattle. But like I say, I'm moving that fence right in front of them. I'm not giving them as much as I did give them for the 115 pair, just because just the time of day and what I, I could move this a little bit better twice a day. Um, here it is. <clears throat> so right here you can see how much residual we got on the ground, how much litter we got hanging around here, across there. Um, and so our daily moves, you know, we had 66 pair there and 38 yearlings. I actually started the yearlings on the east end of these cattle and these uh, pairs on the west end and just moved them together. And then as they got closer, as you know, nosy yearlings, they always have to, they always got to mix with the other ones. And so by then we had a, we just had one big herd. So we just kind of, kind of just finished it in 40 days there. So um, kind of the economics, the carbon um, feeding the soil and the biology. I mean, we've talked about it, you know, a lot, a lot today. And the carbon sequence is the best part of the whole part. As you know, as I don't have a PhD in any of these things other than hard knocks. So all my stuff that I've kind of put together is, is either I've learned from different, from going just like you guys have right here today. I mean, that's what got me started. You know, yeah, from my granddad and a few things, but remember he was no-tilling rocks. He wasn't no-tilling cover crops. He was trying to keep, he was trying to keep the rocks pushed down. We're trying to grow some more, more feed for the economics. So, <clears throat> like I say, we had them 66 calves and them 38 yearlings, and we just kind of hip shot this. We've done a little better job. We've weighed the cattle now before this. This is kind of just, this is kind of just what we figured it was at this particular time. Um, two, day, two pounds a day, so 83 pounds. We only put it at a dollar. I mean, we know that economically wise, it was probably substantially, I mean, because if you look back, it was fairly decent price then too. So um, on them old cows, I figured we put another 100 pounds on from where they come. Um, we actually harvest those cows in, uh, right here in September. Um, we, we send them cattle off and then we leave them calves and wean them for 45 days, put them with our big bunch of calves and uh, go on from there. So, so there's some, you know, there's some profitability there. Um, she was saying 30, you know, I, I just had a couple notes that I wrote down. Um, so we was in that crop about 30, well, I would say with spray and everything, maybe some time, 40 bucks, 40 bucks an acre. So on 30, that's 1200 bucks. There's a lot of difference between $1,200 there and $1,200 there that went in whose pocket? I mean, that was, you know, that's the thing there is there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of tools out there if a guy wants to put towards it. And I mean, I'm not even touching the, I'm just barely skidding in the edge of it. I mean, so there's, there, I mean, the sky's the limit on this thing. That's what, that's what I, you know, I tell my neighbors, I tell anybody that I would, I would suggest, you know, I mean, like in your area, for instance, just a quick story like this morning when I was coming down the road, just out of town here a ways, I just tap in the corner of my eye, catch a guy with a cul de pack out there, out there, um, already stirring up his dirt. I'm looking at the clock, looking at my top of my screen, 22 degrees. I was thinking, it's too below in Colville. There's no way it would be farming, but you guys' duration in your time is totally different. But what it is, is, you know, I look at it and that, that soil, yeah, it looks, it looks beautiful out there laying fluffy and powdered. And, you know, my dad, like I say, them guys are still farming. I mean, they farm, they farm just like anybody else. They raise hay, they put it in a dairy, you know, they put it through a dairy cow and run it out the other way, you know. And so there's just other ways to, to look at this dynamics. And, and in you guys' area, in this area, I mean, there's a ton, a ton 
of ways to go about this. Whether you are a grazer or aren't a grazer or you're putting up hay or whatever you're doing, but that's cheap. That manure and that bollage right there is cheap fertilizer. I mean, by far. And so with that, uh, like I say, this is back to the cool season again. So I planted that, uh, I planted that late in 1016. Um, she was talking about, you know, you can plant something too late. Well, yes and no to that. So I guess my theory to that is, is as long as it's in the ground and it's got to start and there's something there. There was some slides early on that I showed back uh, that kind of covered that, but this is, this is the other thing that I wanted to show about the litter. Okay, that was, that was basically in October, right there, we'll look at here, here, all the way across that field. Well, in two and 16, which isn't very many days right now, it's exactly almost right to the day, but remember it was two below there this morning. And there's a foot of snow on that field right now. And also, I wish this was updated just, this is 218, but same effect has happened. There, there isn't really any change that's happened. That's just how we're progressively moving along to put the carbon sequence down into the soil to drive it deeper. Um, so, so what, you know, what a lot of it is, is, you know, what is soil diversity to you guys? I mean, it is, you know, it is a lot of things to me, um, but that piece of, that piece of property there was zero when I started the slide and look at it there. I mean, so the pounds and the pounds per acre and the difference is, is, is pretty phenomenal of what, what the growth is on that, on that part. And I guess in conclusion, I would add, I mean, anything that I know that we all, and, the, and anytime in a hay market, a grain market, a cattle market, anything there, we all go into a slump because the market's down and there's things that happen because it's down. Well, there's a lot of optimism that, you know, that we, we look at these things, and, well, I can't do that anymore. You know, we can't do that, that deal anymore. But there is a lot of things out there that, you know, that do need more research, but they do take time and they do take money. But the thing of it is that's helped our operation here is, is we've been able to sustain our, our ranch. And, and we also, these cattle here that graze and the cattle we raise, are in a GAPS-4 certification program. So them cattle, from when they're born until they're finished, they're, hor they're a hormone-free product, okay? And so we market them cattle to a guy in Nebraska. He finishes those calves out, and just like these guys was talking earlier, I mean, I'm, I'm way interested in seeing how they finish their calves on cover crop. Cattle can only be confined for 60 days in a yard. So basically, value not only on this side of the sector but there's added value side of the sector of the cattle or anything that goes and yeah it's 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 more of a disciplinary action i mean my guys they they don't like it you know when i tell them well make sure you write it down in your book that you the vac you, that you uh, gave that calf a shot of draxin you know well why should we do that you know we just want a rope i said well so do i and i want a cowboy just as much as you use but this here is, is my operation, and so this is how we're going to teach, you know, we're going to teach functionalities to keep these things going. And so, with that said, I mean, there's just, there's a variety of ways to, um, to do, these, do these things in an operation. And I mean, so, I don't know how, how you guys are set up, you know, as operations in this valley or any other valley or anywhere around, but... I mean, there is, there's a lot of value to, to things that are out there today. So with any questions, I'll take any questions if I can help you. I don't know if I can help because there's no PhD in me. Do you find you get bloat very often with this variety? Did you say bloat? Yeah. So her question was, do I find My answer is no, because it's so fresh. It's so fresh and green, it's almost like going, you know, you go to the grocery store, get a head of lettuce and you pop it open. And, 
and the water, the water in there when you walk through there in the afternoon or the morning is still the same amount of dew that's on you at six in the afternoon or at six in the morning because of what they what we was talking about is holding that water right on the top of that ground. So yeah, it's a good question because I think a lot of it is the digestive system of the variety part of it versus like if we just say, for instance, there was just straight grain there, straight grain there, we'd work, we'd worry about some acid, you know, of some sort, you know. <laughs> That's a good question too. Yeah, yeah, you don't. But the thing of it is, and and the other part to add to that question is, they're the be they're the best reseeders because you get you get a different you get them pulling some of these heads off the sunflower or the canola any of those others it's all in i mean you look right down on there and everything that started through that system is right there and so it's just basically replanted again and again and again so for biodiversity so yes you just want to stand a little further away <laughs> yes sir Excellent piece of work. It's just a matter of establishing some data, right? It is. It is, and 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 I appreciate that comment very well. Um, it, but it's it's guys that I've got to go. I've that's what I was telling Tony is. Oh, so his comment was was just he says I don't have yeah I do not have a PhD level, but I do have. I have a super, super great knowledge of what I'm trying to put out for everybody to do. So how do I collect more data? You know, I should collect more data to put it out, you know. And so my question to that is, is I had, well, two things is I had a really good NRCS, by the way, <laughs> from Colville. Um, and so he was my neighbor across the street. And so he would walk across the street after five o'clock or whenever he was just roaming around Sunday, Saturday, whatever. Well, he helped me put a lot of this together and that's the knowledge that I, I went for because if I was coming in to unsaddle my horse or coming to do it, he's like, oh, have you been up to that cover crop? And you, me, procrastinator, I said, oh no, I haven't been up there for like four or five days. He's like, you need to get up there. Look at these pictures, it's that high, I'm like, well, I want to see it when it's this high. I don't want to see it that high. What are you talking about? So I guess the learning experience that I've had is now, and to answer one more question that, that I just forgot about is, we actually, before these cattle go, for in the fall of the year, I should say, um, before we put those cattle in there, we weigh that set of calves, okay? And then the day that we shoot the calves, it's pretty easy for us. Yeah, it's a little bit confusing, but we just run them across the scale and we weigh them and then, and then we mix them back with the big bunch and then we just go and then I use that data kind of to go back and collect um, what I've done historically. Well, historically it's like about two, oh, between, it's between 2.2 .2 and about three pounds a day gain on them cattle is the difference. But it's only, you know, I mean, look at it, it's, I mean, that's only 28 days that we put them in there. And them cattle are coming off elevation of 8,600 feet back down to this country here. So, so there's, a, there's, there's a huge benefit to that. You know, probably that little bunch of cattle there of 115 head, you know, back to the, what the, what the price is today, yeah, a little bit different. But if it adds a certain amount of value back into the operation, was worth my time to put it back into the function of it. Yeah, we, we've done some, we've done a few things like our electric fence. Now, for instance, uh, we've put an electric fence all the way around the outside, a high tensile, and then we just come across the middle, just like splitting it right in half. And now we, we have a lot better, easier way to graze it. Graze it. My kids can go change the, change the electric. It, it's in 15 minutes they can be done. The only problem is, is always remember when you're changing that fence, if you got your sunflowers growing this way, trying to take the fence that way, all she does is hang up on them all day long. And so you have to go flip every one of them over that, over that sunflower. And so 
I learned a few things the wrong way because they're growing because the sun's coming up, going down in the west and she's coming up in the east. Well, their heads are going like this into the sun. So if we was moving that electric fence against the grain, so that was just one little, one little flaw that I had. Any other questions? Nope, nope, no chemical fertilizer. The first year, yes, I put dry fertilizer on the first year, but since then, there's been no, no fertilizer, just what, what you see is what you get right there. Yep, and we did in 2018, let's see, in 18, um, we did just like everybody, we was all kind of short of water and we was dry. This crop wasn't, it was in 19 actually. Well, no, it was in 18. I did it again, but I don't need the, but what happened was is the growth that was up to my kids' chest was only about, about below my waist, above my knees. But still on a dry, on a dry year like that, it's the same capacity. It's just we couldn't graze it as long. So there was, there was some more diversity. It was a light dough, it was about a hundred and I think yeah, that one was about, let's see, I believe, don't correct me, I think it was about 250 pounds is what we put on there. Um, but the, in consideration though too, see there was already grasses that was already there too, so, so it wasn't really a apple to apple deal, it was the next year that it changed the, changed the dynamics of it. And we did apply it, so I guess I'd pled it. I, get, I did half rate it the second year. That is correct because we half rated on half of the field is how we did that on that one. Well, you had some good speakers today. These guys done a great job of forming that. And like I say, you guys are welcome to my ranch anytime in the spring of the year. Don't come now because there isn't nothing growing, but you're welcome anytime to stop by if you're coming on 80 and, and uh, visit the places just off the road there a couple miles and like say we take you we take tours there all the time to demonstrate different deal the nrcs is they know the gate code they just go on in more times than i go in i think thank you okay is that one is that it Okay, well, today we're going to speak for going to grab permission one day. I have two books here. I have Building Soils for the Soil Cookbook and Managing Cover Crops on Full. Still on. Ready to go. Yep. I need them both? Yes. Yeah. PA, PA taping. The camera. <laughs> <laughs> they really 